the werewolf duo. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I used to see dogmen or werewolves when I was a kid growing up in Nomi or northern Michigan, but I would always see them two at a time. I'm really not aware if it was always the same two, but it did look like it might have been. That is to say, the descriptions would have matched, at least in the dark, which is the only time I saw them. The thing is, my friends and I saw them a few times each summer, and they just became a part of our lives. I've recently been to a class reunion, and the topic turned to Dogman. I'm going to tell the best stories I collected that night and one of my own, but I'm going to keep it all anonymous because I don't even have contact info for some of these folks to ask their permission. Some of the stories seem to indicate that the two beasts might have been family, or even brothers. But in other stories, they seem to be trying to battle to the finish. And you wouldn't really expect brothers to do that. Each of these stories involves a duo of dogmen, but is it the same duo each time? Or was that just an era when dogmen liked to pair off? I really can't tell you because, no offense, all dogmen kind of look the same to me. I haven't made friends with any of them. I never invited one home. They just seem like giant-sized rats to me. Not the kind of animal you'd want to be around longer than you had to. When a dogman would come around, that meant our partying was over, and we had to get out of that area. None of us ever got attacked by one, but we all assumed that was because we instantly cleared out of their way when they would show up. None of us wanted to find out what would happen if we got in their way, as you can probably understand. Story number one. Dogman versus Dogman. Now this was not the first time I saw the two creatures, but for me personally, this was the most memorable time. I had never seen a single Dogman, although I knew some girls who claimed they had. I had always seen two of them if I saw any, and the same was generally true of the other kids in our neck of the northern Michigan woods. We used to call them the Werewolf Brothers or the Super Werewolf Friends because they seemed to always be together, inseparable. But on this particular summer night, their relationship apparently soured. I don't know who started the fight, and I don't know why they were fighting, but it seemed very intense and very real to me. At our recent class reunion, I ran into one of my friends who was there that night. He thinks that maybe the two of them were just blowing off steam. Have you ever seen two young, healthy dogs or cats play? Sometimes it can seem like a serious fight, but it might be play in their minds. However, I should tell you, if these dogmen were just playing, I wouldn't want to see them when they were really angry. This was about the scariest thing I'd ever seen. First of all, these guys were sort of mainly known to walk through the woods together by people's houses, or to be seen just standing perfectly still and staring at something that we couldn't see. When people saw them on the move, they never seemed to be in a rush. In fact, they kind of had a sloth-like quality to their movements as they just never seemed to be in a hurry. On this occasion, they were moving so lightning fast that it was sometimes hard to follow their movements in the dark. It was easy to hear where they were, though. Beside the growling and snarling and whining, you could hear the foliage being torn apart by their intense movements. At one point, one of them slammed the other into some trees, and it looked and sounded to me like two or three of the trees went down with the dogman. The bunch of us who used to stay out in the woods all night in those days attempted to retreat back to my house, which was the closest to where we were. But every time we made an advance, we'd find our path blocked by a falling werewolf or a leaping dogman. It felt like whatever direction we ran in, the dogman did too. And no matter what we did, we were caught in the middle of their intense, ferocious fighting. And then, all of a sudden... Everything got quiet. I remember we all stood up and looked at each other for a second, not understanding why it was instantly quiet. I looked around and I didn't see either dogman, but I saw a lot of the dust they had thrown up in the air starting to settle. We all bolted for home while we had the chance, while the path was clear. I don't know what direction the werewolves ran in. I don't know if they teleported out of there or what. I also don't know who won that fight. But I do know that we saw them again later that summer. And when we did, they were walking slowly and calmly together through the woods once again. Story number two. At the convention, I ran into my old friend Andy, who agreed to write up his first dogman encounter for us. Here it is. 
Andy's first werewolf sighting. I remember it vividly as if it were yesterday, though it's been decades since that first creepy encounter. Back when I was just a teenager, living in the quiet outskirts of town, my world was forever altered by a sight that defied all logic and reason. It was a typical evening, nothing out of the ordinary. I was lounging in the backyard, idly watching the sun dip below the horizon, casting a warm orange glow across the landscape. That's when I heard it, a low guttural growl that scared the poop out of me. At first I brushed it off as the distant rumble of thunder, but then it came again, closer this time, more menacing and more clearly from an animal. Curiosity mingled with fear as I cautiously made my way to the front of the house, drawn by an inexplicable force. There it was, on the side of our house, illuminated by the pale moonlight, towering over my father's pickup truck like a monstrous sentinel. There weren't just one of them either. There were two identical figures, each standing at least ten feet tall, with the unmistakable form of bear-like creatures, yet possessing an eerie human-like quality. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched in stunned disbelief, unable to tear my eyes away from the surreal scene unfolding before me. The creatures, whatever they were, seemed oblivious to my presence as they leisurely scratched their backs against the worn metal surface of my dad's truck, emitting low grunts of satisfaction. I wanted to scream, to run back into my house, but fear rooted me to the spot, rendering me immobile. Time seemed to stand still as I watched the impossible spectacle, my mind struggling to comprehend what I was witnessing. Eventually, the creatures lumbered off into the darkness, disappearing into the night as quickly as they had appeared. But their haunting presence lingered in my mind long after they were gone, leaving me with a profound sense of unease and an unshakable belief that some mysteries are better left unsolved. Now story number three. One of the only girls who ever hung in my group of friends was named Angela. She used to have theories about the werewolves. Angela's grandpa had been a logger and she knew a bunch of stories about the dogman, as well as some other strange cryptids that loggers used to talk about. I searched Angela out to get her to comment on this stuff for your show, but sadly my online query about her was answered when I found out she had passed away a few years back. Sad to find that Angela is gone, really is. Her younger sister, who I never actually knew back in the day, she was the one who responded to me, though. Her younger sister recounted for me one night when she went out with her older sister, Angela, and she saw the double dogman for herself. So here's Angela's younger sister's story. As I sit here reminiscing about my teenage years, there's one particular memory that still leaves me feeling a bit freaked. It was a time of rebellion for the young version of me a special time of testing boundaries and exploring the unknown. And it all started with my older sister and her group of friends, a wild bunch who seemed to thrive on danger and excitement. I looked up to my sister as a hero, but to be honest, I thought her friends were a bit out of control. They were bad girls, and I only hung with them this one night. They claimed they knew where a werewolf lived, and that was something I wanted to see. I remember the day vividly. My sister, with a mischievous glint in her eye, talked the bad girls into letting me tag along on their dogman hunt. Despite my apprehension, I couldn't resist the allure of adventure, so I nervously joined them. As we ventured deeper and deeper into the forest, guided only by the dim light filtering through the dense canopy overhead, a sense of foreboding crept over me. The air was thick with tension, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were treading on dangerous ground. Suddenly, the group came to a halt, their hushed whispers barely audible over the rustling of leaves. We had reached the spot, a clearing bathed in moonlight, with gnarled trees casting ominous shadows all around. And there, standing at the edge of the clearing, were two towering figures, 
their forms obscured by the darkness. My heart lodged itself at my throat as the reality of the situation sank in. These weren't just stories meant to scare us. They were real. Two identical werewolves, tall and dark gray, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly intensity, stood before us. I felt like I was seeing living statues or something. They were too big to be real. The bad girls had only told us they saw one creature out there, but we were staring at two of them. The girls started whispering, and it caught the attention of those monsters. The creatures let out a menacing growl, their gaze fixed on us with predatory intent. In a frenzy of fear, my brave sister and her genius friends turned tail and fled, their screams echoing through the forest as we all raced back the way we had come. I thought I would die from the fear. We all screamed like we were being eaten alive, but the only bites we got that night were from mosquitoes. I know the dogmen growled at us and chased us out, but I'm not really sure how long they chased us or how far. None of us were brave enough to look behind, and we were too busy squealing and running home. But I remember the dogmen had legs too tall to be bears. Their torsos were as long as bear torsos, but the legs were just too long. These were not skinny creatures, so they were not bears with mange either. My father insisted that we saw two bears with mange, but I just don't think that's what these were. Story number four. Jimmy's memories about the dogman. As I reflect on my teenage years, these are my favorite memories. The inexplicable encounters with these massive, gray, glowing-eyed creatures that haunted the nights of my summers. It started innocently enough with the occasional glimpse of them passing through the back of our family's property. At first I dismissed them as figments of my imagination, the product of a lot of exotic smoke and beverage, if you follow my drift. But as the sightings became more frequent, I could no longer deny their existence. These creatures, werewolves, dogmen, whatever they were, appeared like clockwork, always moving with purpose and determination. Their identical forms, towering and imposing, seemed to blend seamlessly into the darkness, their glowing eyes piercing the veil of night with an eerie intensity. But it wasn't just their appearance that left an indelible mark on my memory. It was the sound of their howls, primal, haunting, echoing through the stillness of the night, and always setting off a cacophony of barks and howls from every single dog in the vicinity. It was as if they were calling out to each other, communicating in a language that only they could understand. For years, these encounters were a regular occurrence during the summer months, happening at least two or three times without fail. Each time I would watch from the safety of my bedroom window, transfixed by the sight of these otherworldly beings as they walked by. To this day, I can't help but wonder about the true nature of the dogmen and the role they play in the tapestry of the world. Are they the guardians of some unseen realm or merely travelers passing through our world on their own enigmatic journey? Perhaps we will never know for sure but I know I'll never forget them. Story number five, Johnny's Dogman Experiences. When I was a kid, we had this problem with big, scary werewolves. Yeah, that's what I think they were, werewolves. 10 feet tall, covered in fur, with teeth as long as your thumb. And they had a thing for our chickens. Didn't happen every day, but every summer or for years, they'd show up and they'd snatch a few birds. I remember the first time I saw one. I was out in the yard in the middle of the night because I couldn't sleep, and I heard this growl that made my hair stand on end. I looked up and there it was, this huge hulking beast sneaking around the yard. And then I thought I was seeing his shadow come to life, but there seemed to be two of the things, each one as ugly as the other, and as large too. They grabbed a couple of chickens like they owned the place and then they were gone before I could even blink. After that, it seemed they'd show up once or twice every summer, usually in the dead of night when everyone was asleep. 
We tried everything to stop them. Traps, fences, even staying up all night with a shotgun for a little while. But it didn't matter. They always found a way in, and they always got what they came for. It went on like that for four or five years, till finally they just stopped coming. Maybe they found a new hunting ground, or maybe they got tired of us chasing them off. Either way, I'm glad they're gone, but I'll never forget those summer nights when the werewolves came calling. And now here's our last one, story number six. One of my friends who is named Murphy actually wrote up a little sort of report of his memories about the Dogman, which he ran on his Facebook a while back. I've gotten permission to use what he wrote here, and he told me to credit to just Murphy, that's what he wants to be called. Murph used to hang with us and see the monsters, but I guess he didn't want to incriminate any of us, so he left those details out of his version of events. At any rate, here's my childhood friend Murphy remembering the two large dogmen that used to live near our neighborhood. Murphy's Dogman Experiences Back when I was a kid, there was something strange lurking in the woods behind our house. Two of them, in fact. Big. Terrifying. Two monstrous creatures that still haunt my nightmares to this day. Picture this. Ten feet tall. Covered head to toe in fur the color of gray midnight. Their bodies were like something out of a horror movie. Muscular. Imposing. With sharp claws that glinted in the moonlight. But it was their heads that really got to me. Like a cross between a wolf and a man. With glowing yellow eyes that seemed to pierce right through you. The first time I saw them was during a lazy summer afternoon. I was out in the woods exploring as kids do, when I stumbled upon a clearing. And there they were, standing side by side. I froze, unable to tear my gaze away from the terrifying sight before me. They didn't seem to notice me, thankfully. So I turned tail and ran back home as fast as my legs would carry me. My dad told me they were probably stalking some prey, Otherwise, they would have no reason to stand so still like that. But the encounters didn't stop there. Oh no. They seemed to have a knack for showing up when you least expected it. The next time was during a family camping trip. We were roasting marshmallows around the fire when I caught a glimpse of movement in the trees. And there they were, lurking, just beyond the edge of the campsite their eyes glowing with an unholy, hellish light. I tried to point them out to my parents, but they couldn't see them. Soon I couldn't either, and we were left alone for the rest of the night. It was the third sighting that really shook me to my core, though. I was out for a walk one evening, lost in my own thoughts, when I heard the unmistakable sound of something crashing through the underbrush behind me. I turned around just in time to see them emerging from the shadows. The two of them, this time with their eyes fixed on me. Let me tell you something. You don't want to know what that feels like to have 20 feet of fangs and claws and fur looking directly at you and advancing in your direction. Without a second thought, I turned and I ran the most idiotic run of my life. I think I ran into three trees and I tripped over every single rock anywhere near my path. It was like something from an old comedy film. I was that nervous and uncoordinated. I was out of breath almost as soon as I started running, but I could hear both the immense monsters charging through the underbrush behind me. I had to keep going even though I was shaking all over and gasping for air. When I finally got home, I found it so difficult to speak coherently that my family laughed openly at me. I can safely say that was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. Thanks, Double Dogman. Let's not meet up. He's a man of love, not hate. He's Ace Williams, 1978. Please join us in thanking Ace Williams, 1978, for making this episode possible. Ace is a member of our PayPal Subscribers Club, which you can join at PeterBernard.com. It has the same perks as joining our channel membership club here on YouTube. And to find out more about both clubs, listen to our international TV spokesmongrel, Henry Lee Dogman. Hank? Thanks, Biggie.
and thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button. Or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804-LA-SCARY. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. stories.